Good morning, ladybugs. Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, and I'm so excited because this week we're going to talk about some great artists and we're going to make some great art and it'll be really fun. This is one of Miss Carla and I, it's our, one of our favorite things to do. So for the next couple of weeks, we'll be learning all about artists. Okay, so today my artist is Roy Lichtenstein, and he has a very long name. It's kind of hard to pronounce, but uh, that's okay. One reason I like uh, Roy Lichtenstein is because he does kind of really big, kind of big art, and um, something that we can definitely do, and we're going to be doing that uh, tomorrow. Today I'm going to read you a little bit about Roy Lichtenstein, and then um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the words that I have behind me. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to read the whole book because it's it's kind of long. So let's see. Here's a picture of him. He was born in 1923, which was a long time ago in New York. Um, and he's, he really did a different kind of art, um, art that had never really been done before, okay? Here is some of his art right here. This is a very famous painting. It's called Girl with a Ball. And it kind of looks like something you or I could draw if we try. It's not like, it's not like some other art where uh, it'd be really difficult to maybe recreate that. Uh, Roy Lichtenstein's most famous paintings were pictures of ideas he got from bubblegum wrappers. So a long time ago, uh, when I was little, you could buy a little wrapper of bubblegum and um, inside, when you opened up the gum, it was usually bright pink. Um, there was a, maybe a little picture or a joke there. Um, kind of like you guys have when you open up your gogurts and you might have a um, a riddle there or something like that. Um, he also got his ideas from newspaper ads and the phone book, which we don't really have a phone book anymore, but we used to. Using his special sense of humor and artistic skill, Roy Lichtenstein took popular images that people saw every day and made them into works of art. Okay, the name pop art came from the word popular. So here, kind of looks like a boat, doesn't it? But it's really a baked potato with butter. Kind of looks like a butter sailboat, doesn't it? Here is a lady and her shoe walking by a can, like a garbage can, it looks like. And this looks like, this looks like somebody maybe wiping something with a sponge, right? So lots of fun things. He had always been interested in drawing and science and the way things worked. And while growing up, he read all sorts of science magazines. TV hadn't been invented yet, so kids listened to radio programs instead. And he loved listening to the radio um, adventures of Flash Gordon. Luckily, he also lived near his favorite museum, the American Museum of Natural History. It was filled with information about dinosaurs, stars, planets, mummies, bugs, animals, and plants. He spent hours there. And those are all things that we're interested in, right? During high school, he became interested in art. Since his school didn't offer any art classes, he decided to take lessons on his own. Now this is the kind of painting that, that a lot of people study when they study art. And he liked it, but he wanted to do something a little different. Roy's early paintings were influenced by such great artists as Pablo Picasso and Fernand Lager. Roy liked the way these artists use thick outlines flat shapes and solid colors. In many ways, these artists' paintings kind of look like the comic book art that he likes so much. 
And here's some more of his paintings. He painted for a long time, all different kinds of styles. But Roy started looking for new and different ways to paint. He liked to look at the bubblegum wrappers and comic books with his sons. One day, just for fun, he made a large painting of a funny cartoon with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck in it. And there you go, I hope you can see that. So one thing he did is he would make little balloon bubbles and then he would put words in them. So Donald Duck is saying to Mickey, look Mickey, I've hooked a big one. They were fishing, right? Roy was careful to make sure his colors looked flat and smooth without any brush marks. He wanted his painting to look like it was mechanically printed so it would be the exact opposite of like an abstract painting or something like that. He even added little printer dots to give his paintings more of a cartoon-like look. When it was finished, he was surprised to see he really liked the way it looked. It looked exciting and different. He went to work making more paintings, ideas he got from comic books and ads. He took his paint paintings to somebody in New York and they really liked them. And lots of other artists at the same time were kind of exploring new ways to paint. Pop art. At first, most people thought Roy Lichtenstein just took comic book images and blew them up to surprising sizes. If you, if you look closely at the pictures he took his ideas from though, you can see that Roy changed everything about it. So he did get his idea from a picture, kind of like when we painted our flowers last week and I showed you some pictures and things that I had with flowers. So when you're painting, it is fun to get your ideas from pictures. Then you can just do your own picture like you like it. So he didn't just copy the things he saw, he did actually do something new. And he liked making those little Benet, Benet dots. There's another painting that, uh, there's another artist that likes to do little dots. Remember when we did our little dots earlier this year on our pumpkin? Because I had gone to Japan and seen the pumpkin. So kind of like that, making dots is really fun. No one had ever made paintings using Benday dots before. In comic books, these dots aren't meant to be noticed, but Roy liked the way they looked, and he made them an important part of his painting. So you can see this painting here has quite a few Benday dots. And again, you can see the words. It didn't take long for people to start appreciating Roy's art. Lots of people thought his paintings were just fun to look at. This girl, she looks a little bit upset about something, not sure what. And then this guy here is looking in the looking in a hole in the room. He said, I can see the whole room and there's nobody in it. So I think we're almost done with the book. So he kept painting. You can see here he's got some big red strokes and a lot of dots and more of these paintings. And that's it. That's kind of a picture of him when he was a lot older. Okay, so so he is a really fun artist. I really like I really like doing his art. Tomorrow we will do a little bit more of his art. But I thought really quickly I would talk about some of the things, some of the words that he uses. So he uses action words, okay? So we know that action words are words that say you're doing something. Jump, hop, skip, run. And he didn't use those kind of words exactly, but he used other words to to make you think of an action happening. So words like kaboom, bang, zap, crash, wham, okay? And what do I have here? 
I have an exclamation point. And we've seen those a lot in our story, especially the Piggy and Gerald story. Stories, they have a lot of exclamation points. And that means you say it really exciting. Kaboom, bang, crash, zap, wham, pow. Those are words that have a lot of, you don't say them really softly, you say them kind of loud and with an exclamation point. Then you know that they're really big words, big words and they, they mean something. So let's see. Let's see if I look in here. So the word crash right here that begins with the letter C. Crash, I've got two cars here, okay? And I'm gonna crash, am I gonna crash like this? Is it gonna be like that really softly? No, it's gonna be crash, crash. It's gonna make a loud sound, right? It means crash, crash, okay? So that's one of the words, let's see. Oh, where's my, oh, you could do an airplane too. You can do an airplane, I got it upside down, but the airplane's going along and maybe it can crash too. It can be crash, it goes in and it falls down and it lands on the two cars that crash too, right? Let's see, what about zap? Well, zap is, let's say you you had one of those bug um, zappers, which kill bugs uh, by kind of zapping them. And I like, the, I like the word zap because it begins with Z. And one of our friends in the ladybugs, he begins with the letter C, doesn't he? So zap would be like zap, like maybe maybe your finger is really hot and you touch somebody zap and they're like, wow, your finger is really hot. Don't touch me. So, or the bugs, the bug zap, zappers, which I kind of don't really like them because I like my bugs. So, but they do make kind of a zzz sound, sound, I can't say it. Z and sound, it's hard to say together, isn't it? Okay, so let's see. I thought I would bring out some of my favorite puppets here to demonstrate the words. So let's see. We have Big, Big Wolfie and Bunny. Hi, hi Bunny, say hi. Hi Big Wolfie. Now, Wolfie said he'd be on his best behavior and he wouldn't bother anybody. So, let's see. Wolfie is going to say the word kaboom. All right, ready, Wolfie? Ready? Kaboom. Hmm. Does that sound like a really powerful word? Kaboom. Well, let's see. Let's say bunny. Let's see bunny. Bunny can say it. Bunny, ready? Kaboom! There you go. See, Wolfie? See? Yeah, I see. Yeah, you have to say it really loudly, okay? Let's see. Let's try this one. Wham. Wham. Oh, Bunny, do you think he can do better than that? Yeah, why don't you try it? Wham! Wow, Bunny, you really know how to say those words powerfully. Let's try one more. Let's do, let's do zap. Ready? Now remember, you're gonna say it really loud. Ready? Zap! Uh-oh. Hey, don't do that to me. Okay, try to say it this time without, without bothering Bunny. Ready? One, two, three, zap. Arr. Okay, that was much better. Let's see, how about, how about Wolfie plays a fun game where he goes like pop or something like that. Do you wanna play? Yeah, I wanna play. Okay, ready Wolfie? One, two, three, pop. Ah, they're gonna tear all the, all the shredding. Pop, pop, pop. 
that was fun, wasn't it? So that's what's so fun about his paintings that we're gonna do tomorrow. Um, because it's really, you can have a lot of fun with it. You can use, he liked to use three different colors, but he used a lot of colors, but he liked the primary colors like yellow and red and blue. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to work on that. And, um, oh, I had a, I meant to tell the, the parents um, on Thursday, we're gonna do Frida Kahlo and uh, Miss Carla had sent out an email telling the parents to do an eight by 10 photo of you and make sure that it's gonna be black and white photo, okay? So Ladybugs, I hope you had fun learning about Roy Lichtenstein and, um, and then I will see you tomorrow. Oh, I forgot one thing. I have a hammer here. Hmm, which word, which word would fit the hammer, an action word? Crash, well, I could crash the hammer. How about zap? Hmm, I don't think that's gonna work very well. How about kaboom? Well, if I threw the hammer, that would make kaboom, but I don't wanna do that because it's really heavy. How about this word here that begins with the B? Bang, do you think that's a good word for a hammer? I think it is, let's try it, ready? All right, one, two, three, bang! I don't know if you could see that, but maybe I'll do it right here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna break anything. I don't wanna break our whiteboard because I took it from school. One, two, three, bang! Oh, it reminds me of that song, the hammer one. See, I'm banging and it's really loud, right? And then what? I have one more thing down here, I can find it. Hmm, and I don't see it right now. It was a clothespin, and I was going to put it on my finger, and then I might say the word, ouch, and that would be kind of an action word, ouch, right? Or maybe, maybe not. Well, anyway, have a great Monday, and I can't wait to, um, till tomorrow and we're gonna have another um, time with all of us and we can show our favorite art, okay? Thank you, ladybugs. Have a great uh, afternoon. All right, bye-bye.